Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek and today we're going to be looking at an iPhone 13. It's got some issues with touch, lagging, audio, and we're going to see if we can fix it. So let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at an iPhone 13 with issues such as no sound, lagging, and freezing. We open the settings, we go to the ringtone and notice that the phone is extremely laggy with delays occurring during every action. And at the same time there is no sound at all. You can see clicking on the different ringtones, nothing appears. No sound whatsoever. And even going back, it's lagging. You can't even slide this touch bar. Let's open the phone and we can find that it's definitely been worked on as the uh, pad covering over the power IC area has been removed. So let's unscrew and take out the motherboard. Beware that if you're in America you've got a 5G antenna to deal with so you need to remove the battery. And we can see that the previous repair tech has put some thermal paste uh, under the board. Using a hot air gun at 380 degrees, we'll be able to separate the top and the bottom board, or you can use a heating platform. We can see that the previous technician has soldered jumper wires near the mid-layer solder points, indicating that this phone has some, most likely suffered a hard drop. We found that many solder points were oxidized and blackened, so the solder joints were unstable as well. We can't rule out that the no sound and lagging issues may have been caused by a second hard drop that led to the deformation. These types of problems are very common. Let's use a soldering iron and some flux to clean off the oxidized solder past. And this will also reveal the damages that were done from when the board split. Carefully wicking away, making sure we're not pulling any additional pads. Going all the way around, cleaning up every single pad, making sure that they're no longer oxidized. So that they'll be ready to receive solder when the time comes. And then we'll clean it up with a brush and some isopropyl alcohol. Since some of the pads were lifted, we need to make sure that we restore the ability for the solder balls to connect to them by grinding away and making the traces more exposed. Using a very fine tip Dremel tip, I'm able to go in and carefully grind away and reveal more of those traces so that the solder ball will make contact with it. Carefully continue to remove and dig down to those traces. Now it's obvious that someone's been working in this area as they've covered it in UV mask, which means there's most likely ground plane exposed. However, we are not able to see the trace. And what we're looking at is, looks like this is the one that's damaged. So what we're going to be looking for is this trace right here little trace that's going to run off of here. So you can see all of the different layers that, that are potentially below that area. So we really need to make sure that we're only tying into this one. You can see here the entire circuit that that's connected to and how it jumps over to the bottom board. You can see it interacting with these two ICs and then also coming over to this resistor that's tied directly into the CPU. That along with some of the other missing ones, making sure that they're good, should bring this phone back to life. So let's remove some more of the, the copper grounding plane. And actually there it is. There's a tiny little trace down right next to the copper. We're gonna need to be very careful not to damage it. So let's scrape around it, expose more of the trace. And there it is, a tiny little hair sticking out. So 
Let's insulate the grounding plane with some UV solder mask. That way we can tie into it without worrying about potentially grounding out the line. And we're going to cover up all of the other joints that aren't necessary. Hit it with the UV light and carefully apply some solder paste so that we can tin that trace. It's extremely tiny. All we need for it to do is tie into a small jumper wire. We'll carefully use our iron until we can get it to make contact. We'll clean up the flux. We'll cut the wire so that we can spiral it into a, a newly formed pad. Once we put that into place, we'll need to make sure that we thoroughly clean off all of the flux so that there's nothing preventing the UV mask that we're going to apply to actually hold it in place. We don't want this little jumper shifting, otherwise we're going to lose connectivity there. So we'll put some UV mask all over it and then carefully scrape down exposing our newly formed pad. Now I'm going to take some solder paste and we're going to fill in all of these little areas the solder tends to go down inside of each one of these slightly recessed holes where the pads used to be. And with hot air, we're going to go ahead and re, basically reball this section so that we can start to verify and make sure that each one of these little pads that we've exposed is fully tinned. Otherwise, when we try to go and solder this, the, the top board and the bottom board aren't going to make full contact and we're still going to have issues with the device. We want to make sure that there is some solder left on here, but we don't want there to be too much. Otherwise, we're going to have uh, a large solder ball combination when we apply the other board to it. So we want to make sure that there's enough, but not a whole lot, not a crazy amount of solder on each one of these pads that we've rebuilt. We're going to carefully remove all of the solder from the pads that we don't need to have extra solder. prepping it for uh, re installation of the bottom board. Now we'll use a soldering iron and some wick to clean up the mid frame, prepping it for reballing, making sure that we've made it so none of the pads are oxidized or none of them have extra solder. We'll then put it in a mold here with a stencil that will allow us to add some solder paste and reball the midframe. Using hot air at 300 degrees Celsius, we can melt the solder paste into solder balls. Clean up with a clean room wipe any of the excess flux left behind. We don't want there to be any floating when we go to reflow these together, otherwise we won't get solid contacts between them. So we're going to apply some rosin flux to the solder balls with the lower mid-frame solder joints to ensure a strong and more reliable bond between the top and bottom boards. Applying as we go, make sure we have sufficient but not too much. We're going to place the upper and lower layer into a PCB holder using hot air at 350 degrees Celsius. We'll solder the two together. Now we can test and check and make sure that the ringtone in the settings and the, the and the volume adjust works. And as you can see, we no longer have the lagging issue as well. So as you can see, with a bit of effort, being able to basically diagnose and fix the damages that were missed or weren't, or weren't properly done by another tech, it can be a little complicated but hopefully this gives you an idea how to do it right the first time or what it might take in case you run into a device that's been worked on before. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know as well. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.